Good afternoon, Refuge family. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to December 1st, Refuge Daily. Um, today, we're going to be looking at Colossians chapter 1. We're going to look at a couple of the first verses in there. Um, and I'm going to read verses 9 through 15 for you today. And we're going to talk about something extremely important that we need to be paying attention to this season. And really, every single day, we need to consider this, and that is, what is our life built upon? And we're going to see in Colossians chapter 1 how, um, how it is just laid out for us what our life is supposed to be built upon and where do we really get our hope and our direction and we know where to go in life. Let's go ahead and pray as we begin today. Father, I thank you so much. Um, for the provisions that you have provided for uh, so many different people in this season of struggle, of hurt, of pain, um, of confusion. And as we look into the final weeks of 2020 and next year, there seems to be a lot of changes that will be taking place and hopefully coming out of this season that we're in um, and into some better times, Lord, um, if it be your will. Father, help refine us, make us more like you every single day. In your name, amen. Uh, years ago, I went through um, some different classes and was taking one of, my, one of my classes that I had to take as I was going through some uh, whole education process to become a firefighter was one, it was building construction. Um, and not necessarily the most exciting class to take, uh, it, but it was a really informative class. It was a good class to just kind of understand exactly how to construct buildings because when you get into that industry where you're going to be inspecting buildings or maybe running into a building because it's on fire, it's important for you to understand how that building was constructed. Uh, that way you understand how that building is going to collapse um, if you're on the inside of it in a dangerous situation. Well, in my building construction class, and there were several of them that I had to take, um, we went over structural integrity of buildings. What, what is a building based upon? You have the foundation, you have you know, the walls, you have the different types of systems that the roofs are, are built upon and, and set up that kind of give that building its integrity. Well, and we got to go through a lot of the different buildings from just basic house structures all the way up to large skyscrapers. And we got to take a look at how the World Trade Center was um, constructed and, and exactly how the unique construction of that building um, you know, led to what we know uh, happened on that day. We got to really kind of dive into that along with other different types of buildings and their just structural integrity. Uh, and what happens with the building is when you take out the thing that makes it, um, you know, takes away its integrity, meaning either its foundation or maybe uh, load-bearing walls, which would be walls that kind of hold the weight of the building, the whole thing will come coming, will collapse or will come down um, or will implode upon itself uh, because the thing that gives it structure, the thing that gives it integrity is missing or it's fractured or it's broken. Well, I believe here in Colossians chapter 1, or really the book of Colossians, uh, there's kind of a laying out as to what is the integrity of the people of God or the church. What is the church built upon? And for me and you, if you're a believer in Jesus, you know that the church is built upon uh, Christ himself. And that's what Colossians is all about. They'd say that if Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, is about the people of God or those that represent God, the church, then the book of Colossians is about the head of the church or the foundation of the church, the rock in which the church is built upon. And I'm going to start here in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, and I'm going to read through till I believe it's verse 15. And I just want you to listen to these words as we are reminded what we are built upon. Knowing that we are built upon someone, God himself, Christ Jesus, we are built upon something that, that transcends all cultures, all realities, all periods of time, all struggles, all difficulties in this life. We are built upon something that does not move. Let me go ahead and read this here. Paul says this after he... Um, 
as he's, he's writing to the Colossians, he says this, For this reason we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And you know that I talk often about the importance of understanding uh, how Scripture talks about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us or transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. And this is where he points out, and here is who He is, and here is the foundation of your life, of my life, of our community's life, people here at Refuge. This is what we need to be built upon, and nothing but this. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by him all things were created, things in heaven and things that are on earth, visible and invisible, spiritual and physical. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Or, your version might say, he may have the supremacy. You see, Christ, for me and for you, he is the foundation of our life. And he needs to be the foundation of your marriage he needs to be the foundation of how you parent your children. He needs to be the foundation of your personal relationships with your friends. He needs to be the foundation of your working relationship with your boss and your coworkers and those that work maybe underneath you or for you. He is the foundation of your relationship with your neighbors. He is the foundation of our life. And to do life in any way, to have relationship with anyone, to do any type of service that is absent or void of the very foundation of what life is all about, which is Christ Jesus and his very essence, which we know is unfathomable love, a transcendent peace, an inexpressible joy, a, a, an unending patience, a kindness and a gentleness, a true nature of how faithful he is to keep his promises to actually look at the person of Christ, knowing that his spirit dwells deeply inside of you, to do anything in this life that is absent and void of Christ is absolutely meaningless and it's worthless. You will be like a building if you build your life upon anything else, if you build it upon wealth, if you build it upon money, if you build it upon prestige or fame or notoriety, if you build it on anything but Christ himself, which is the exact opposite of what a lot of this world is telling us to build our life upon, you will end up spending years and years and years going the wrong direction. And one day, it's all going to implode or it's going to collapse upon itself because you will like, you'll be like a building, like a person who builds their house upon the sand, that you don't build it on a strong foundation. Make sure that this season, as we start December, as we start to reflect upon our celebration of Christ God himself coming into our world, becoming like one of us and showing us how to live, that we go through this season building our life upon the true foundation of what life is, and that is God, God himself. Christ is the head of who we are. He needs to be the head of our households. He needs to be the head of our relationships. He needs to be the head in every way that we conduct business. He needs to be the head of everything. And by the very virtue, by the very virtue of making him your foundation, you will not need to worry about anything else in life 
when the storms come and the wind blows, you will not have to worry. Just stay rooted and connected to your foundation, which is Christ Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you so much today. I thank you that you are our foundation in a world that is so confused and running around and so chaotic, not knowing what to do, Father God, with themselves, people all over the place, jumping on one bandwagon or another bandwagon, trying to be a part of the most recent message. Father God, may we be a people that speak no other message but your message, understanding that everything in this life, everything, Father, is temporary, Lord, it's here that we can enjoy it, Father God, but it is not meant to be the thing that we build our life upon. May we not be people, Lord, that build our life upon temporary things, but build it upon your eternal, transcendent, and ever-powerful, supreme, preeminent nature, Lord, that you are the reason for life. And may we never forget that in all that we do. In your name, amen.